CEO, the fourth year student, said, my father wants to meet you. And I agreed to meet with the father. At that time, our model was that we'll charge some money as rental and for other services that we give. And it would amount to about five to six lakh rupees over a year for a space, computers, everything. And his father said that, uh, how do we raise this money? I said, three of them, two lakh rupees loan each family can get. So he said, that's all right, what if he fails? So I said, it's okay, as a degree from IIT Bombay, if he fails, he can always get a job. Then he says, if he fails and gets a job and starts a job with two, ra two lakh rupees loan on his head, who will marry him? I talked to Nandan and Kamal Rekhi who were supporting us, said, we have a marriage problem. The story actually tells you that the failure is extremely fearful state for the Indian mindset. Indian people do not like to fail. Whereas being enterprising is about taking risk. Being, building business, building any technology innovation is about taking risk. We need to encourage people to take such risk. So we changed the model, I got a crore rupees, and I said for the first year, every enterprise which is attempting to build itself will get everything free. We instead have 5%, 6% stake in that company, which is on paper. That's a model, incidentally, which has been now accepted. All IITs and IISC now have incubators. Some, of course, are still building. The Government of India, Department of Science and Technology, has now started giving funds to the tune of 20 to 40 lakh rupees a year to each of these incubators to be given as soft loans to startup companies. And this soft loan can be written off by converting it into a stock. In case your company fails, the stock value is zero, which is all right. What I'm trying to say is that we have begun, although too late, perhaps too little, but we have begun, and this needs to be encouraged. Fortunately, there are a whole lot of private venture capital funds today who are actually willing to put money, but like the other Indian mindset not taking the risk, they also don't want to take a risk. They, they want to ensure that you not only have a prototype, but you have a ready-made product, you have a ready-made business, you actually have revenues from the customers. I ask them, then why would I need your money at all if I have all of this? So there is a dichotomy and what Swa said is extremely important. But the most important point, and I'm, I'm so very happy and proud that he is here, is that I would like at least 10% of you to venture out. You know, Kamal Rekhi told me something which is very important. He says if you venture out in the early years of your career, then the cost of failure is much less because you have not built your families, you have not built larger responsibilities. If you fail, you can afford to fail. Experiment with your life for one year or two years. But 90% of the times, if you have the fire in the belly, you can actually succeed. So let hundreds of Infosys come out of Mangalore. It's possible. Okay, but I, I think that's the point. I would like, Malikesh, I would like to add. Please, uh, please. I would like to add an incident. That is, I was in my first semester engineering, and and my elder brother was from I am Lucknow, and after he got placed in ICICI Bank with a very, with a very luxurious uh, package. My, uh, like actually, my mother immediately approached me and. Uh, and my mother starts saying that, okay, fine, I want you to, uh, like I, I want you to sell out your company and I want you to concentrate on your engineering and afterwards I want you to apply, apply at IM and afterwards I want you to be placed like your elder brother. And, and like actually, literally, I was heading a multinational company and my mother always assumed that I was always operating a French club or a hobby club. And, and of course, it is the Indian mindset, that is, especially even with my own friend circle who has been, like actually, who, uh, 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 who always feel happy about my achievements and everything. And in case if I ask them to start an enterprise, okay, I mean, uh, I mean, in case if I start an enterprise, I feel, I feel it is financially insecure. And uh, like I said, it's the most sad part. And I think, uh, and I think we students should be more adventurous and we should accept the risk. And like I, actually, it is what I indicated in my, indicated my family, that I'm not married and I'm not having anyone to run the family. And of course, I could accept the risk of starting a company and, and in case it fails, I would focus on some other enterprise. I never indicated I would ever apply as an employee at any organization. But in case if my first enterprise fails, I would make sure to start one more enterprise with some more activities. And of course, I think the Indian mindset should be, uh, should be more adventurous and we should start accepting the risk. Uh, I had a small incident when an American reporter asked me, that is, like, actually, what is the main, 
uh, what is the main setback for the Indians to become employers and and when you see the Western countries, you see a lot many enterprises and people start taking risks. And like I say, I had a very small incident. Outside the US universities, you see the students applying, uh, applying some skydiving course or some flying clubs or some, uh, like actually some water sports or some adventure uh, games. And in India, in case, if you, in case if you meet your friend and you say them, that, okay, fine, I'll pay you 5,000 rupees, would you be willing to uh, take up the risk? of skydiving or some other adventure sports. And, and of course, I'm sure your friend says, uh, of course, I'm not willing to accept the risk. I'll pay you 6,000 rupees, but my, I'm not willing to accept the risk. And of course, it is the mindset of the Indian students. I think, I think the mindset at the education and even at the family and even at the student level have to be updated and, and, and of course, we have to start accepting the risk. Thank you, sir. I will only add that in India, if you are unmarried, it doesn't mean you can take more risks. Actually, if you are married, then you have a companion who can take more risks along with you. Don't forget that when Nandan and Narayan Murthy started Infosys, it was their spouses who, who helped them to start that. So India mindset is different. Life partners are, are a far stronger entity to take risks together in life. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> So please get this young guy married as soon so he can start two new startups. <laughs> uh, coming, <laughs> coming, coming back to the issue of entrepreneurship is not only about building businesses but building innovative technologies as well. You actually need research. You actually need to understand real life problems. So you need a lot of uh, working together of the academic institutions and real life industries in terms of consulting so that real life problems come to the students and you also need a lot of resource mobilization for doing all these activities. Government funding of course is important but how that government funding can be multiplied by additional resources. I think these are some of the important issues where I am now requesting Professor Yadav to share his thoughts. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I will start with uh, one thread before I go into what I want to discuss, and that is uh, failure as a mindset of Indians. I would like to tell you that in most of the places when we go, we see portraits of people who are successful. We never see a portrait of a failed person. And there are many more people who failed but became successful. And one good example is that of you know, the person who lost his sweetheart, failed his business, went bankrupt, lost to the Congress, election of the Congress in the United States, lost in Senate, lost vice presidency, and on the 13th occasion, he became the president of the United States, and he is rated as the greatest president, Abraham Lincoln. You have to see the devotion, that means he did not give up. And giving up is the easiest thing people do it uh, while doing innovation. Whether it is in business or anything else, we tend to give up easily because we find the alternate path is far rosier than the path which we are following. So with that, I would like to say that these days we hear a lot about knowledge economy. And everybody, every politician and scientist alike talk about knowledge economy. I believe that it should be replaced by two other words, that is innovation economy. Unless there is innovation, there cannot be economic growth. We have too much of knowledge with us. We have too many people who are knowledgeable at, and they can give you exact analysis of failure, but they will never take the risk of bringing in, into picture their own experiences and educating themselves. Since we are talking about you know, higher education and its relevance, funding of these so-called allied institutions, now, what is meant by light? Light, where people, you know, cram to the memory, go to the best of the schools, the government spends money, and one fine morning, they go to the Western world. That's what you mean by light. I do not think light is that. Light is something where only select group of people go, and they believe that they are on the top of the world, and others are not. And this type of distinction has come because of disparity in funding of education. And you will find that, Earlier, IITs were given a lot of money. 
then now NITs are getting that money and you find a sea change in NITs.